What is up ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to show you how I structured, how I built my uh, side project Sendit, uh, which is basically a secure and uh, painless file transfers for developers without leaving the terminal and it works over SSH, you don't need to download anything, it works straight out of the bat for free. Uh, so how does it work? Well, <clears throat> it's a Golang app, right? It's a Golang monolith. Everything is written in Golang. But let me quickly show you how it works. So you do SSH, uh, send it .sh, right? And then you can basically do a lot of stuff. For example, uh, I'm going to append a message to it. I'm going to say, um, I got some files for you. And then I can basically do... Uh, pipe everything what I want into this thing. Uh, I can zip my folder, I can tar it, I can encrypt it. You can do whatever you want. It's pure terminal based, so uh, be creative. Uh, but for this uh, reason, I'm gonna do just my main.go file, press enter. So it's gonna, it's gonna tell me that it detected a verified user. So I have my own domain. If you want your own sended domain, you need to register, uh, sign up on the website. And what this does is basically it's going to spit out two links, right? It spits out uh, a, a download link and a direct download link, right? So the normal download link, uh, if you click this, <coughs> you can see basically what happens is it's a link that you can send to people, right? And if they click it, they come uh, on this website and you can see that it's a verified link. That basically means that my SSH key is linked to my account, to my subdomain. So people that receive this link will be 100% guaranteed that this link is coming from me and not from somebody else, right? Um, yeah, so you can see the file name is sandit.sh. Uh, what you can do is you can also rename your file and all that stuff. And if I, and this is the message, I got some files for you. Um, and then here I can download it. And if I click it, uh, you can see it here, send it to .zip. It's basically just my main.go file, right? That's what it is. Uh, later on in the future, <clears throat> you will also have the uh, ability to uh, send it to directly to an email address, right? It's something that I'm going to implement uh, later on. So you can say send it to .sh, and then you can do, for example, uh, mail to foo at bar .com, and the link will be directly sent uh, to that email address. All right, um, Sendit does not store files on the server. It basically, um, it's some kind of an air dropping mechanism where your SSH will uh, stay open, right? So uh, look at this here, you can see what, what happens if I do this. It basically stays open until somebody downloads it, right? So because Sendit does not store the files, uh, the server acts as a middleman as it connects basically uh, the sender and the receiver together, right? And the direct download link is if you click it uh, and you open it, boom, it's going to instantly download it, right? That's what, so you can way get it uh, and, and all that stuff. Okay, so that's basically how it works. <clears throat> Man, it's still early. So, uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's a complete Golang application, right? Uh, let me basically, can I, yes, this is even better, right? So these are my folders here, right? Uh, it's a complete Golang project. Uh, it works with uh, a framework which is Fiber, right? All the HTTP is done with Fiber and also some custom handles. I will show you real quick. So basically, um, if you check my folder, uh, this private key and public key, don't worry about it. It's basically local. It's in my Git ignore. So uh, it's not on GitHub. Don't worry, guys. Don't freak out uh, right now. So basically, I have a make file, which is very important. And in this make file, actually, to be honest, guys, this font is actually too big, not gonna lie. <clears throat> Let's do it like that. So what it does is basically my default make file. I have a couple of videos uh, that are explaining uh, why I'm always using a make file. And that's it, right? And if I do make build, it's basically building my server, which is my binary here. And this is the thing, the standard thing, right? That gets called and it will boot up my SSH server. It will boot up my uh, couple of HTTP servers. Uh, <clears throat> the next folder we have, actually, do we need to... Uh, I have the main.go file, which is basically um, where I bootstrap my whole project, right? Um, loading the environment variables, making my HTTP server, uh, initializing my database, uh, template engines, the whole shebang. It's basically uh, my routes are in here. There is no need to have a separate route file and all that stuff. It's basically all in this um, main.go file, <clears throat> right? Um, yeah, so that's that. I'll go, of course, I have my M files here, which I'm not going to show you. Um, yeah, so the next important folder is my data folder, right? So uh, what is a data folder? Uh, a lot of people will call this models 
or types, I call it data, because by the end of the day, it's data, right? So we can see a user, basically what it is, an email, a full name, GitHub username, because the authentication is with GitHub. Uh, some roles and all that stuff, and um, all my database calls are basically in this data layer, right? So everything database related, uh, specific, tied to a, a specific domain, for example, a user or a transfer or subscriptions, uh, will happen in this um, data later. <clears throat> so yeah, let me drink my coffee because uh, yeah, I'm gonna waste your time a little bit here, right? Hmm. Uh, my throat is still early in the morning, so I'm still a little bit rusty, right? Um, then we have the DB, and this is basically uh, something that will frown your uh, eyebrows because uh, my database is a global variable, right? And I know a lot of people will complain and will say, but I don't give a fuck, right? So uh, it's very, for me, it's important to have uh, an ease of development. And it makes, in my opinion, I'm working in Golang for over 10, uh, not, not around 10 years since the beginning. And I did a lot of different techniques, right? So injecting my database uh, as a dependency into my structs and all that stuff, I did that thing. And, but still, it's just annoying because then you need to have repositories and all that stuff. And I don't want to hassle with all that things. I just want to build stuff and uh, call it a day, right? So I'm making my database a global variable. Uh, I'm calling initialize here and having some, some helper functions here. And the database is a MongoDB. And, and that's it, right? It is what it is, right? That's how I do it. Do you need to do it? Uh, make it a global a variable A. That's up to you. Uh, then we have a, a folder handlers, which is basically um, a folder with all my handlers, right? So we have, for example, uh, the upgrade handler, uh, the utilities for my handlers, for example, subdomain, it will handle the subdomain uh, settings, it will handle all my, uh, the user settings um, shenanigans. I have some middleware in here, for example, it checks subdomain uh, must out and out middleware and all that stuff. Metrics, that's something for myself. Um, the landing page, of course, and uh, authentication itself, right, with the GitHub uh, shenanigans, right? So data, database, handlers, then I have a logger, which is basically the same shenanigans as database. The logger itself is uh, a global variable, just because it's easy, right? I'm just using uh, the git logger because it's a very nice structured logger here. And um, I have this init function. You can see this pattern that I'm using. I have this global variable that needs to be initialized in the beginning in my main.go file. And what it will do if it will check um, what kind of environment we are. And um, if we are in development, I will use the stdr as the output. And in production, I'm using um, the standard log file, right? I'm logging everything into a file. Then we have scripts, which is basically uh, gen secret. Um, my, in scripts, it's basically a folder and I'm not using any kind of command line uh, package. What I do is I have a scripts folder and I make all these Go files, all these main uh, Go files, right? So where I can just call uh, main.go run, uh, uh, go run gen secret .go. <laughs> my bad, uh, and it will basically call this uh, logic, right? And in this case, it's for generating a secret um, on the server, right? It's secret for, for encrypting and all that shenanigans, right? Uh, and later on, all my migrations will also be in here and other stuff that needs to happen, right? Uh, the settings, what is this actually? Uh, yeah, this is actually garbage. That, that, that needs to be deleted, um, but hey. It was basically a settings folder with all some global variables uh, conferring that stuff. Not quite sure if I use this actually, this link expiration. Yeah, I'm using it. Hey, you see, sometimes things happen and you have no clue why. Um, that's the settings stuff. Um, the SSH server, it's <clears throat> is basically everything tied to my SSH server, right? So it's basically passing the user options. Um, this is a test actually. It passing the user options, it will... Uh, generate the transfer and peak the session, all things related to my SSH shenanigans will be in my SSH server package. Very simple, just one server.go and a server test.go and call it a day, right? And it's a pretty big file. Um, then we have uh, test data, which is basically uh, for my testing and unique stuff. It's uh, just a folder that's basically get ignored, so don't worry about that. The util, 
uh, is a collection of stuff, right? It's basically um, shared. Some people call it common. Some people call it helpers. Some people call it util. Some people hate util. Like I said before, I don't care, right? Uh, it's something that works for me. That's how I name it. How do you name it? Legit, nobody fucking cares, right? So we have validate email, uh, generate a random string, uh, get the environment variable, because in Golang you have OS get env. The problem is there is no way to fall back, right? So I basically wrapped it up into a function where I get the env, and if I cannot find it, if it's empty, I'm basically using a default, right? Very simple. Uh, fingerprint, SSH key, uh, all shared stuff is in my util function, right? This is pretty nasty. This is basically a list with uh, domains. It's very, very big that you cannot claim <laughs> because, yeah, right. Um, the version, it's sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I do this, it's basically just a version and I can update it and I'm using this uh, global variable. Maybe it's something that I could put in settings. I don't know, it's something from the beginning. It's relics from ancient times. It's here, it's there. Nobody care, right? Uh, the www folder is <clears throat> very important because Send it basically, if you check uh, this thing, um, how can I actually go back here? Look at that, uh, send it as H. Dot .zip was my previous domain name, but the problem is dot .zip is kind of sketchy, so I basically changed it to SH, which makes more sense, right? So everything you see in this application is basically Golang templates. There is no front end. Uh, there is, I mean, there is no JavaScript, there is, there is uh, no next, front end or something, it's just Golang and templates, right? Uh, and you can see, I can basically uh, go into my files here, click here, and then I'm at my personal domain, which I'm gonna transfer into an airdrop thing later on. It's another feature that's coming. I can log out, uh, I can log back in actually with GitHub here. Hopefully it doesn't prompt it, no. So you see, I'm logged in and everything uh, is working with Golang templates, right? So that's why I have this www folder. And uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of stuff in here, right? So I have assets, which is basically all my asset stuff. Um, some adders, 500 domain, not found and all that stuff. My landing page, my layouts, uh, my login, metrics, partials, which is basically, for example, <clears throat> my navigation and all that stuff. And of course, in each project, there are some files you never use. For example, here, it's a test HTML. I'm not gonna click it because I'm not quite sure what it is, what's in there. So uh, let's keep that basically uh, hidden. Uh, yeah, so basically it's it's partial stuff which is going to get uh, used in, in the in the template engine, right? Yeah, that's basically it. Just uh, what I do is I make a folder and then in that folder I'm making an index file. Maybe, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just, I don't know. Hey, it works. It's fine. Uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, basically guys, this is actually it, right? So um, <clears throat> like I said before, if you make a project, uh, people always ask me how to structure, how to... Uh, what, what front end do I need to use? What tools do I need to use? You don't need to use anything, right? Just put everything, uh, make a monolith, make it as easy as possible because uh, for me, it's it's super easy. If I wanna, um, if I basically wanna, wanna change something, the only thing I need to do is change it here in one of these files, commit it to GitHub and go to my server and reboot the, pull it and reboot the application, right? There is no need to make it complex. I built this thing in a, in, in, in a couple of, I mean, in a weekend, right? Because I'm keeping it simple. I'm keeping it simple, I'm keeping it lean, and I'm keeping it dirty sometimes. It's <clears throat> it's all fine. But then if you wonder how I basically do uh, login, uh, how I basically deploy this stuff, well, it's very simple, right? So what I'm doing is SSH uh, root at send it dot uh, sh uh, i'm gonna say minus p it doesn't actually matter guys uh, to this one boom right now i'm in my server right and then i'm gonna do a screen uh minus uh, it's 110 810 actually so i do this boom i can do a screen minus r uh, 810 boom now i'm basically in here you can see it's already logging uh, shenanigans out uh so i basically cut down my server right i do a git pull origin master right boom i pull this in of course there is nothing to 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 do i do a make run boom it's booting up everything right and then i'm basically close my screen and it's and i'm done i'm calling a day i'm at the beach sipping margaritas right so that's how basically how i deploy right and it's gonna still it's gonna keep working of course it's going to be offline 
for this uh, couple of seconds, but it is what it is, right? No need to make fancy uh, Docker and 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 all, and all that and all that stuff, wasting your money on nothing, right? That's how you deploy stuff in Golang. That's how I deploy stuff in Golang. Of course, if the project gets very big and I have millions of users and uh, I'm driving my Ferrari, of course, then I need to make sure that I have some kind of a load balancing with multiple instances and uh, graceful shutdowns and, and rolling deployments and all that stuff. But right now, not needed, right? So I don't need to hassle with front end. I don't need to hassle with microservices. I don't need to hassle with continuous integration, bullshit, configuration. Simple, effective, amazing, right? That's it. Um, of course, things will basically grow organically. That's important, right? You, a lot of I see it in my Discord so much, so so, much, so many times. People do not have anything live yet, and they are already making problems that do, that do not exist, right? Don't do that. Just put it online as lean as mean possible, learn from your mistakes, fix them, and reiterate, right? And organically grow your project, right? Because right now, this is my structure, but hey, was it gonna be in a couple of months? Nobody knows, right? Maybe I need to do a rewrite. Possibly, it's possible, right? So that's the thing. And if you really wanna know how this is done, actually, I have this previous video uh, from yesterday. Well, basically, when you see this video, it's gonna be the previous video, not the one from yesterday, because it depends. Uh, so you can see how I made this SSH trick to basically uh, tunnel the SSH to the browser uh, because a lot of people were also asking in these comments, uh, what is the use case for this? Well, this is the use case, uh, Mr. or Lady, right? Uh, that's it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. And of course, there is the full-time GoDev, GoDev program if you want to be a Golang engineer, professionally active in the space, just like me. See you in the next video.